Hello, Math 3C, and welcome to Chapter 12. Section 12.1 is about graphing in three dimensions. So in a moment, I'm going to show you this program that you can use for free. It's called geogebra.org. So this is for graphing in three dimensions. But first of all, let's take a look at the distance formula. So I'm starting here because one important thing it shows is when you are in working in two dimensions, you only have x and y. When you're in three dimensions, you have x, y, and z. But notice that the distance formula is very similar. In here, you subtract the x's, square it, subtract the y's, square it, take the square root, you get the distance between two points. Well, when you're in three dimensions, you do the same thing, subtract the x's, square it, subtract the y's, square it, but then you also need to subtract the z's and square it. Let's take a look at an example. Find the distance between these two points which live in three-dimensional space. So they always go in order, x, and then y, and then z. So for the distance. So you need negative 3, subtract 2, 8, subtract 3, and then negative 2, subtract 4. So put those in there, square each one, and then add it up. So this right here is going to be negative 5 squared. 25. This also would be 25. And this would be negative 6 squared, which is 36. That's going to be the square root of 86, or 9.274. Now let's take a look at the graph in three dimensions. So I was practicing right before you got here. So when you first go to um, their website, geogebra.org, it looks like this. And what you need to click on is right here, the 3D calculator. So you click on that, and it's going to look like this. So to plot a point, just call it point A equals 2, 3, 4. When you hit enter, there's point A. So what this means is, on the x-axis, go over by 2. So the x-axis is red. So you go over by 2 on the x-axis. Then, parallel to the y-axis, go 3 units parallel to the green one. And the last coordinate is z, which means go up. So this red one is the x-axis, the green one is the y-axis, and the bluish-purple one is the z-axis. So this gray part right here, that's called the xy-plane. So when it's xy-plane, that means z equals 0. So in other words, don't go up to 1, don't go up to 2, but this is the ground level. If I rotate it, so just grab it with the cursor and I rotate it so that we're looking straight down the z-axis, we're looking straight down on that point, you'll see you go over by 2 in the x direction, and then parallel to the green axis, you go over by 3. That's going to be the point A. And then if I make it so that the xy uh, plane disappears, then the point A is hovering 4 units up in the air. Okay, now let's get point B. So then point B equals negative 3, comma, 8, comma, negative 2. There's the point B. Now how about for the distance between them? So up here there's these two little icons. So this one is for typing in equations so that you can graph stuff and things like I'm doing right now. And then this is other operations that they have built in. So they have a bunch of stuff that's built in. I'm just going to scroll down. So sometimes it doesn't list all of these automatically. Sometimes it just lists like the first ones and then you have to press more. Anyway, scroll down to distance or length. So what's the distance between point A and point B? 9.27, just like we got. Now while we're here, how about if we graph some other things? So I'm done with this now. How about x squared plus y squared equals 4? 
So x, for some reason I put capital. I don't want capital. And then there's a keyboard down here so that you can square things. And you could even use that keyboard plus y squared. And by the way, this program, it likes to graph while you're in the middle of typing. Not exactly why they programmed it that way. It doesn't wait till the end. So right now, it's trying to guess as to what I what shape I'm talking about. And then equals 4. So when you're in two dimensions, x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle. Well, if you look at it right down the z-axis, that is a circle. The radius is 2. But in this equation, x squared plus y squared, there is no z. So it figures, okay, that means that when you're at a height of 4, put a circle. When you're at a height of 5, put a circle. And when you stack all those circles up, you get this shape, which is called a right circular cylinder. The word right means perpendicular, because it's perpendicular to the xy plane. Circular, because it's a circle. And then cylinder basically just means you repeat the same shape. So right here there's a circle, right here there's a circle. At every height, for every z value, there's another circle. You stack all those circles up, you get a right circular cylinder. Now let's just play with it a little bit. What if I put a 5 in front of the x? How does that change it? So this is still a cylinder, but take a look at the top now. That is an ellipse. So this would be a right elliptical cylinder. So right because it's standing upright perpendicular to the x, y plane. Cylinder because it's the same repeated shape, but the shape is an ellipse. So that's an elliptical cylinder. Okay, play with it a little bit more. How about if we also put plus z is squared. Well, when you're in two dimensions, x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a circle. In three dimensions, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. That is a sphere. So its center is at the origin. And as you can see right here, the radius is 2. So what if we wanted to move that sphere around? Well, if I just try to grab it, all it's going to do is rotate the picture. It's not actually going to move the sphere for me. So what I need to do to do that is do something like this. Put parentheses, x minus 2, and then that gets squared, plus and how about y plus 3, and that gets squared. Oh, I just put too many parentheses. Hold on. And then, hopefully I can just leave that extra parenthesis. z minus 1, and that gets squared. And then it equals still 4. OK, so it even got rid of those extra parentheses for me. It was like, hey, buddy, you don't need those extra parentheses. So when I did that, and let me just make this a different color. So go to settings, the color, how about a blue one? So now I've moved the sphere over. So for this one, since it says x minus 2, the center is going to be at 2, and then negative 3, and then positive 1. So let me just plot that point. a equals the center will be at 2, and then negative 3, and positive 1. And if I did it right, that little blue dot should be right in the middle of... Let me turn off the red one. That blue dot is going to be right in the center of that sphere.
and that definitely looks like it's in the center. Okay, so especially in this first section, you're, I strongly recommend you start using the GeoGebra right away. Let's go to another example. All right, so hopefully you remember from pre-calculus how to complete this square. So what you can do is take this 9, move it over a little bit, and then the b, which is sitting in front of x, you would take the 4, cut it in half, that's 2, square it, that's 4. So then you add a 4 and subtract the 4 right back out. Or another style is this 4 right here, you could say add a 4 on this side and then also add a 4 on this side. Whoever I stole this from, they're using the style, they add it in, subtract it right back out. Either way, you'll end up with the correct answer. So then these three can be factored and factored into a perfect square. So for this one, the vertex would be at negative 2 comma 5. Remember when it's in the parentheses, you actually... Okay, so now let's complete the square to find the center of this sphere. So when it's got x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a number, that's going to be a sphere. The 2x and the 10y, that's going to change the center from 0, 0 to something else. So the first thing that I do is take the x information and put it over here with a little bit of space. Take the y information, put it here, and then leave a space. And if there was more z information, I would leave a space right here by z squared as well. Now, complete the square. So take the 2, cut it in half is 1. Square that, it's 1. So I'll need to add a 1 into this blank. I'll also need to add a 1 to the other side. Then with the 10, you cut it in half is 5. Square it, that's 25. So I'll need to add a 25 to both sides. And of course the 8, I just bring that down. So when you factor x squared plus 2x plus 1, that's going to be x plus 1 squared. Next, we've got y plus 5 squared, and then z squared, and 25 plus 9 is 34. So the radius is going to be the square root of 34. The center, negative 1. So remember, when it's in parentheses, you actually use the opposite of that number. And then the y value will be negative 5. And z doesn't have plus or minus anything, so that's just going to be 0. And the square root of 34 is approximately 5.831. Now let's go to the graph and see if I did this right. So here is the sphere. So I'm just typing it in the way that the original problem was. That's an important thing. Always graph the original function. x squared, y squared, z squared, plus 2x, plus 10y, and it equals 8. Then how about the center? Does it look like I got that right? So graph the point A which equals negative 1 comma negative 5 comma 0. And then that, yes, that does look like it's in the center. So in this section, we're not doing a lot of heavy calculation or other math right now. We're just basically getting used to graphing in three dimensions. Now, one thing I could do to test and see if I got the center right and I got the radius right is I could find the top point. So basically, if this point is in the center and you go straight up from there, that should be sitting right on top of that sphere. So that means don't change the x value, don't change the y value, but just go straight up. So leave the x value the same, the y value the same, but then go straight up by what was it, the square root of 34. So point B equals, leave the x value the same, leave the y value the same, and now have the z value be the square root of 34. <clears throat> and that should be a point that's sitting right on top. As you can see, that's sitting right on top of the sphere. So that would actually be the tallest point, point B. Excuse me. 
Now, um, what if you graph something else? So usually when we're in uh, pre-calculus or math 3, 3b, you would go y equals x squared, y equals sine of x. <clears throat> Quite often, we would go z equals. So z equals x squared plus y squared. So this is called a paraboloid. So it's like a parabola. <clears throat> if you look at the red shape or the red edge of it, that looks like a parabola. But it's in three dimensions, so it's called a paraboloid. And you could rotate it around, take a look. Did somebody put some Dr. Pepper in there or what? And what if you change one of the coefficients? What if you make this a 5? Then, let me rotate it around look at it this way, then on the top, that is an ellipse. So the whole shape is still a paraboloid, but now it's an elliptical paraboloid. So this around the top is an ellipse, but the whole shape is now called an elliptical paraboloid. What if you change it to minus? Whoa! Well, if you happen to remember from math, oh, actually pre-calculus. When you have x squared minus y squared, that makes a hyperbola. And so that's basically what we're getting here is a hyperbola in three dimensions. Okay. So my point right now is you should play with the GeoGebra to help you out with the homework. Speaking of the homework, Let's take a look at the homework. So this is what it looks like for me. So these are the questions that I chose. I actually go in and look at every question because I don't want any sneaky questions. So I go in and looked at every question and said yes, yes, no, yes. So let's see. For example, I chose number five. So let's take a look at number seven. Since this is the teacher's version that already has the answer, that sort of spoils it. But I'm gonna ignore that answer Give a geometric description for or of the set of points in space who's done it being very formal. So it's x squared plus z squared equals 4. Then it also says y equals 7. Okay, so go back to Safari. And they said x squared plus, I can't have the plus up there, plus z squared. So that is a paraboloid, because right, like I said, it's going to try and guess as to what you're doing before you finish typing. So ignore it until I put equals 4. So with this, the equation has no y value. So that means that Let me spin it around till we're looking at the positive axes. So this is the, the red one is the x-axis, the green one is the y-axis, the blue one is the z-axis. So when you say x squared plus z squared, that is making a circle. Try to get it so you can see. So this is a circle that's going around the origin. But because this equation has no y value, that means that when you go out to y equals 1, make a circle. And y equals 4, make a circle. And y equals 14, make a circle. So this is like a, a pipe laying on the ground, or slightly underground. But it's called a right circular cylinder. Now they also said, just hit enter, y equals 7. So y equals 7 is like a sheet of paper. Officially, it's called a plane, so it is extremely thin. So it's, in theory, it's so thin you can't even see it. But of course, we like to be able to see things. So if you look at it from an angle, then it's like a piece of paper. And what it did is it chopped it right here. So you've got this right circular cylinder, and then somebody chopped it right there. So I would say that what that leaves, if I can zoom in a little bit, 
and look at it this way. So what it's what it's talking about is this blue circle in here because it's saying to put both of them together. So this is a circle and it lives at y equals 7 and because of the 4 right here its radius is 2. So let's see if I can answer that question now. Hey, where'd the question go? Okay. Now, because I closed it and reopened it, even though I clicked on the same question, it changed the numbers. So it's essentially the same thing. x squared plus z squared equals 81 and y equals 2. So whenever you... Um, so two people could be working together. Hey, let's work on the homework together. What'd you get for number seven? Oh, I got that it equals 81. What? Mine says it equals four. Each and every one is going to be different. But let's see if I can answer it based on the graph that we just did. It's a line. Okay, stop. No, it's not a line because I saw that it was a circle. Part B, the line? No, it's not that. The circle, yes. The center would be at, with this one, they're saying y equals 2. So right here, it's y equals 2. The radius is 9. Yes, because it says equals 81, so that means the radius is 9. And it's parallel to the xz plane. The what? The xz plane. So go back to the graph. So the xz plane means, the look at the x-axis and the z-axis, so the red line and the blue line. And then, if you take the red line and the blue line, and you were to make a plane right there, that would also be where y equals 0. So if I put y equals 0, that is the xz plane. So whenever it says xz plane, whatever letter is missing, y, then y equals 0 is the graph of that. So if it said xy plane, then you would put z equal to 0. If it said yz plane, then you'd put x equal to 0. So when you put y equals 0, that is the xz plane. And then they said y equals 2. So when you have y equals 0 and y equals 2, those two planes are parallel. Okay, so this video is getting sort of long. Let's just look quickly. Is there something else we should look at with the graphs? How about, so on the homework, I said number 29. So similar to that should be 29. It's pretty similar. Oh, that's not similar to 29. How about... So give a description of this. So part A, z is less than or equal to x squared, and y is positive. So z is less than or equal to x squared, and y is bigger than or equal to 0. Oops, delete, delete, and delete. Start fresh. So they said z is less than or equal to. To be honest, I'm not sure if I can do less than or equal to. I've never tried it. Less than or equal to x squared. I don't really know what that is. So instead, I'm going to say equals. OK, look at the graph of z equals x squared, and then try to figure out what it means to be less than or equal to. So again, the blue axis is the z-axis. And if it's saying that z has to be less than it, so this is called a parabolic sheet. So it's a parabola. So that's a parabola when you look at it sideways. But then it's like you take a sheet of paper and you fold it into a parabola, that's a parabolic sheet. So this is making a parabolic sheet. With less than or equal, that would mean what's under it. 
So that would be down here, what's under it. I'd rather look at it like this and say, okay, that's this part that's down here. And then the other thing that it said is y is bigger than or equal to zero. So that would be that would be this part right here. So in green, that's the y-axis. So that would be this part right here. So now let me see if I can answer the question. The region on or inside the parabola in the xz plane and all points to the left. So it can't be to the left because the left means negative. So these two that say left, that cannot be right. The region on or inside, okay, that can't be right because inside, so inside would be in here. And then that would mean that you're above it, and that would be when z is bigger than or equal to. But it said z less than or equal to, so it's this underside down here. So the region on or outside the parabola. Now, to me, that's a little bit confusing because what's the inside and what's the outside? So I guess if you look at this like a bowl, then this part would be... This part would be the inside of it, and this part out here would be the outside of it. So the little green mark is indicating this is the correct answer. Outside the parabola, so that's down here, in the xz plane, and all points to the right. And then to the right, because we're talking about positive y-axis. Okay, so this section has gotten a little bit longer. This video has gotten a little bit longer than I was hoping, but hopefully by me doing the graphing and also going over some homework questions, it helps you. Please let me know if you have any questions.